This is Howard Reingold speaking to you from Northern California. I want to take the opportunity to speak to Korean people who are involved in the very exciting street demonstrations that bring together the, the power of technology and self-organization and political expression. I want to pose an important question to you because I think that Korea has the opportunity to demonstrate to the world how we can evolve better forms of democracy that involve more people through the mediation of technology. And the question I want to pose to you is this. How can we make sure that smart mobs become smarter rather than more mob-like? So let me explain that. Let me start by explaining a little bit about myself. Today I teach at Stanford University and the University of California, but for many years I've been a, a participant in online activity and I've been an observer. I've written a number of books. I've started companies. I've also been a political activist. Going back to the 1960s when there were street demonstrations in my country, in the USA, protesting the war in Vietnam. And from what I see from here, I think that you're a very important stage, not only in citizen journalism, but in the evolution of smart mobs in democracies. Many of you may have read my book, which was published in 2002, but I will very briefly explain where that came from for those of you who have not. In 2000 and 2001, I noticed that things were happening in the world. There were the political demonstrations in Manila that were organized by people using uh, SMS, text messaging on their mobile phones, and we were seeing a number of groups on the internet doing things that groups had not done before with Wikipedia creating knowledge with open source software creating software people were beginning to cooperate in ways that they weren't able to cooperate before they're able to engage in what social scientists called collective action doing things together in ways that they weren't able to before and my investigation revealed what I believe to be an important stage in human development in that every time there is a technology that enables people to communicate in new ways, whether it's speech, the alphabet, or printing, or the internet, or mobile phones, people develop literacies. They, they develop ways of using those technologies and communication media to do things together, science, uh, technology, um, democracy, uh, knowledge, many of the, the aspects of the modern world really have been enabled by the literacies and the collective action that came from the technologies that, that made print and the internet possible. Now we are seeing the, the, the merging of the internet, the personal computer, the, the digital camera, and the mobile telephone into some kind of new medium and we're really at the beginning of that. I was very excited after my book was, was published, it was published in, in the Korean language as well, to hear about the demonstrations that happened in Korea uh, around the election uh, of um, President Roe and, and I've cited that as an example of a, a last-minute get-out-the-vote campaign that actually tipped the election. Since then, of course, there were events in Madrid where there were terrorist bombings and the, the government claimed it was uh, by the Bas Basque separatist groups. Uh, but uh, S Spanish citizens didn't believe what the government was telling them and they, they turned out in mass demonstrations and again tipped the election in favor of the eventual Winner. So these are all instances in the Philippines, in Korea, and in Spain where the head of state uh, is the head of state be because a large number of people spontaneously self-organized uh, because they were able to do so uh, courtesy of the media that are now available 
to them. And I've been tracking events all around the world, in the USA, in, in Africa, uh, in Asia, in, in China, in Korea, and I think that there's one common theme, which is that the, the really powerful mass demonstrations, such as the ones we're seeing in Korea today, have to do with people being very dissatisfied with their government. They believe their government is lying to them, or they believe that their government is not listening to them. And those demonstrations have had an effect. But I think that, again, to go back to my experience as an activist, and from what I've observed happening around the world, it's necessary to begin evolving some mechanisms beyond simply uh, calling people together to demonstrate, to protest. The role of journalism is essential, and of course I cite Oh My News as an example of citizen journalism for the rest of the world. And I'm excited to see that this kind of long tail payment system is allowing citizens to fund as well as to practice citizen journalism. It's important that Oh My News and other citizen journalists establish a way of getting out information very quickly to people about what is true and what is not true. Let me back up a little bit and talk about the role of journalism and democracy because I know that a free press and democracy in Korea is rather younger than it is in, in, in my country, in, in the USA. Uh, when I started studying online interaction, I wrote a book called Virtual Communities, uh, way back in the 1990s, I asked myself, what's the most important aspect of people beginning to use the internet to communicate with each other? And of course, I concluded that the question of personal liberty, are individuals going to be able to secure more freedom uh, for themselves, or are are states going to be able to impose totalitarian or, or authoritarian regimes on people? And that led me to the political theory about the public sphere, which very briefly says that in order to have a democracy, you need to have information flowing in two directions. You need to get accurate and true information about the workings of the state. The people who make the policies that influence citizens cannot do so in secret. It's the duty of journalists to find out what the policymakers are saying. Information has to flow in the other direction, what's known as public opinion. The, the citizens of a free society must be informed enough, they must have good information, and they must be free enough to communicate with each other so that they can debate issues and their, that their opinions, their informed opinions, can influence policy. One of the things that these street demonstrations is doing is that it is voicing public opinion. In the long run, though, is that opinion based on accurate information and are the strategies that people use, are, are using, are those in the long run going to be able to influence policy? So let me, let me talk to the, the first part of that about the accuracy of information. The problem with the Internet is the same thing as the great power of the Internet. Anyone can publish. There is a huge amount of knowledge on the Internet and a great deal of untrue knowledge. A lot of rumors spread very quickly. Here in the USA, in the political season, people get emails saying very untrue things about candidates, and many people believe it. We don't really have a central source besides the traditional media, the mainstream media, to go to to find out accuracy. And what, what journalists should do when they hear about a story is to try to track down the source and find out if those sources are accurate, to find multiple sources and compare them against each other, to try to find experts, to try to do independent research, to see whether the rumor is true and should be broadcast or whether the rumor is not true and people should be, be told that. In the age of citizen media where everyone is a reporter, we have even more need for that kind of fact-checking mechanism to be something that more people know about and that is instituted more and more quickly.